how to be a traditional woman in a modern situation. How to be a traditional woman in a modern situation. So it's kind of going into traditional woman is more of it's more of being like our foremothers. Traditional. A modern is present time, being a present time woman. Being a woman that, 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 that goes by the ways of today. So modern women have situations that they are into today. So how do you become a traditional woman when you're in a modern situation and this is part one part two is going to be how you be a traditional man in a modern situation so this is what we're going to talk about today so it's how do women change and reform themselves while being in specific situations well it's kind of you have first you have to look at it as the same as repentance how do you change yourself and be righteous in a wicked world? It's the same dynamics. Let's look at that in uh, 1 Kings chapter 8 and 46. 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 46. If they sin against thee, for there is no man that sinneth not, and thou be angry with them, and deliver them to the enemy. So that they carry them away captive unto the land of the enemy, for far or near. Mm -hmm. Yet if they shall bethink themselves in the land where they where they were carried captive. So they said, if you remember yourself in the land that you were carried away captive, that's the worst situation you can be in. It is in captivity in a land that you don't know. Go ahead, so you say, if, if you but think yourselves in the land you carry captives, go ahead. And repent, go ahead. And make supplication unto thee in the land of them that carried them captives, saying, We have sinned and have done perversely. We have committed wickedness. So, uh, verse 48. Verse 48. And so return unto thee with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their enemies. Right. Which in the land of their enemies, which led them away captive, and pray unto thee toward their land, which thou gavest unto their fathers, the city which thou hast chosen, and the house which I have built for thy, for thy name. So, repentance is the same dynamic of being in a modern, of women being in a modern situation. So it's something that's possible. If you can repent and return to the Lord, meaning return to the tra traditional ways of the Lord in a situation of oppression, guess what? A woman can be a traditional woman while she's in a modern situation as, as well. It's the same dynamic. Uh, go to Romans 12. And read verse 2. Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. And be not conformed to this world. And do what? And be not conformed to this world. So conform to this world, meaning that that's what the that's a modern woman. A modern woman is conformed to the world of the present time. Her mentality, her attitude, the way she look at life is conformed to her present world. Go ahead. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove that that is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So that's, that goes to the same thing as repentance. Repenting in captivity is the same thing as uh, being a traditional woman in your modern situation. It's the same dynamics. So let's look at what is traditional. Uh, we use the Merriam Dictionary just to look up traditional. First definition is 
of or relating to tradition, consisting of of or derived from tradition. You say of relating to tradition, consisting of derived from tradition. Go ahead. The second one is handed down from age to age. So it's ways that's handed down from age to age. Ways that's handed down from age to age. Right now, the modern woman have ways that's been handed down, but it only goes back one or two generations because that's what modern is. So it's a handed down from age to age. Uh, read three. And three. Following or confirming to tradition, adhering to past practices or established com conventions. So I say adhering to past practices or established conventions. Let's get uh, some scriptures on this. Go to Deuteronomy 32. Deuteronomy 32. So now, with us losing that, we lost our tradition. We lost our ways. Now we have to, in getting those back, this is what the Bible says. Uh, read verse 7. Deuteronomy 32 in verse 7. Remember the days of God of old. Do what? Remember the days of old. It says remember the days of old. Go ahead. Consider the years of mean generations. Ask thy father and he will shew thee thy elders and they will tell thee. So it says so say, remember the days of old. This is going into remembrance. Because we got so many examples of our foremothers in the Bible that was going through the same situations or worse situations that our sisters going through today. Let's get a precept. Go to Job 8 and 8. Because it says, hand it down from age to age. Job 8 and 8. Job chapter 8 verse 8. For inquire, I pray thee, of the former age. Of what? Of the former age. So he said, inquire of the former age. That was it's say handed down from age to age. The former age is we gotta go back many generations. We can't go back one or two gener generations to get the traditional traditions of our foremothers and forefathers. We gotta go back to when we were in uh when the most high was dealing with us. We got to go back to the generations when the Most High was dealing with us. And that's only through the scriptures. Go to Genesis 35. Let's get a quick example. But before that, go 2 Thessalonians 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, read verse, start at 14. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 14. We're on 2. He called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. All right. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which ye have been taught. So he said, once you go back and learn those traditions, it said, hold fast to them. Read that again, verse 15. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and 15. Therefore, therefore brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word or our apostles or epistles. It's a hold the traditions you've been taught by the word. You gotta hold those traditions that you've been taught by the word. Not by the the, the word of your mom, your grandmother. It's by the word, the traditions that you see in the word. So let's go to watch this. Get uh Genesis 35. Let's look at, I believe it's Rachel. Well, that's what Rachel says about traditions or customs. Genesis 35, read verse 31. Genesis 35, verse 31. Is it 30? It might be 31. Genesis chapter 31 and verse 35. And she said to her father. So this is, let's we'll start at 34. Verse 34. Now Rachel had taken the images and put them in the camel's furniture and set upon them and Laban searched all the tent. 
but found them not. That's what she said to him. And she said to her father, let it not displease my Lord that I cannot rise up before thee. She said, she said, I cannot rise up before you, Father. Why? For the custom of women is upon me. Say, for what? For the custom of women is upon me. Say, the traditions of women, how the custom of women is upon me. This is the mentality of a traditional woman. This is the mentality of how our woman need to be in. If you are about to do something that goes against the customs that you or the tradition that you was taught by the word, this is the mentality you have to have. She said, I'm not going to rise up against you because the customs of women is upon me. That's how we have, that's the mentality we have to have, especially the woman. Read that again because that's big. Genesis 31 and 35. And she said to her father, Let it not displease my Lord that I cannot rise up before thee, for the custom of women is upon me. And he searched, but found not the image. So she said, The custom of women is upon me. So this is the traditions that we have to hold fast to. This was her holding fast to that tradition. She knew the scriptures say, Honor thy mother and thy father. So she said, The custom of women is upon me and also she she is meant to be silenced she cannot rise up and be bucking on no man especially not your father so she said the custom of a woman is upon me that's big so let's look at uh modern go to the miriam go back to the miriam let's look up the definition for modern so traditional is something that's handed down from age to age. If you want to, for us to learn our traditions, we have to go to the Word. And you have to seek out the tradition, the customs of, our, of how the women behave. And how the woman, uh, what is their role? To, be, to even think about of becoming a traditional woman. Because a tradi traditional woman pretty much have it easier. With all the technology we have, with this is the this is the freest our women has ever been as far as being able to do what they want to do. Uh, as far as jobs, this is the freest they ever been, but this is also the miserable that they've been. <coughs> so something is not adding up. Got all this freedom, but it's not adding up. That's because we're outside our scope. Our women is outside their scope. You got the modern for uh, yeah. for Miriam. Read that. The first one is of relating to or characteristic of the present. Let's say, read that again. Of relating to or characteristics of the present. Let's say, characteristics of present day. Of relating to or characteristics of present, go ahead. Or the immediate past. Or the immediate past. That's why I said you can't go back one generation, two generations. You got to go back. Lots of generations, the generations of the Bible, the 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 generations that we've lost, the traditions that you learn by the word. But modern is talking about one or two generations. It's saying like having characteristics of the present or the immediate past. Three, two, two, involving recent techniques. Methods or ideas. They say having recent techniques, methods, or ideas. This is a modern woman. They have recent techniques, methods, or ideas. Read the noun. Now. Yeah. Okay. The first one is a person of modern times or views. They say a person of modern times or views. Or the person have modern times or views 
a person that goes how how the world look at stuff today, that's a modern man or a modern woman. And it's also known as what? A liberal. Pull up, look up liberal in the same Maryland dictionary. A liberal. First one. Of relating to or based on the liberal arts. That's the liberal arts. Read the one about people uh, three. Ob obsolete. Lacking morals restraint. Let's say a liberal is someone that lacks moral restraint. Go ahead, read four. Not literal or strict. It's a, not li a person that's not strict. They in modern time, they not strict. Go ahead and read five. Uh, for real, five. Especially not bound by authoritarianism, authoritarianism or what? Or traditional forms. A liberal is somebody that's not bound by traditional forms. That's a, that's called a modern person or a liberal. Jump down to. Uh, the now and read a one who is open-minded or not strict in the observance or orthodox traditional or established forms or ways. It's a one that is open-minded and not strict in the observance of traditional ways. That's what a liberal is. Somebody that's that they go off new ways, new ideas, uh, as if they say, you got to get with the times. Yeah, basically, basically they, they go with the flow. Whatever, yeah. whatever hot right now, whatever going on, they do it. That's the way, they look at it like, that's the way the world is now, so that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, kind of like a win and wrong attitude. So let's get Isaiah 32. Let's look at the liberal. Isaiah 32, starting at 1. Isaiah chapter 32 and verse 1. Behold, a king shall reign in righteousness, and prince shall rule in judgment. Go ahead. So this is future judgment. Go ahead. And a man shall be as an hiding place from the wind, and a convert from the tempest, as rivers of water in a dry place, as the shadow of a great rock in a weary land. And the eyes of them that see shall not be dim. And the ears of them that hear shall hearken. The heart also of the rash shall understand knowledge. Right. And the tongue of the stammerer shall be ready to speak plainly. Watch this, verse 5. The vile person shall be no more called liberal. You say what? The vile person shall be no more called liberal. You say the vile person, I mean the foolish person shall be no more called liberal. Go ahead. Nor the churl said to be bountiful. Go ahead. For the vile person will speak villainy. Go ahead. And his heart will work iniquity. So a liberal person is going to work iniquity. They talking about forget traditional ways. We got to go with the new updated. It, it, people always say those biblical days. Biblical days is from the beginning to forever. Is the Bible is from beginning to ever talks about every time generation. So it say they heart will work in to Go ahead or to practice hypocrisy, and they practice hip hypocrisy. These people, why? Because their ideals is constantly changing. Your ideals is constantly. Change it and say a man's heart change it change with the wind. Whatever the latest trends, that's that's your that's your way of life. Go ahead. And to utter error against the Lord, to make empty the soul of the hungry. And they go make empty people's souls. That's 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 hunger hungry hungry for change. That's hung, hungry to get right. These liberals. They go. They gonna be. They say, make empty the soul. Go ahead. 
and he will cause the drink of the thirsty to fail. Right. The instruments also of the churl are evil. He devises wicked devices to destroy the poor with lying words, even when the needy speaketh right. Well, that's what he said about the liberal. Verse 8. But the liberal devises liberal things, and by liberal things shall, shall he stand. So the liberal is, by liberal things, that's what, that's what they're going to stand on, meaning modern things. The, the latest trend, that's what they're going to stand on. They don't think about observing the traditional ways. Verse 9. Verse 9. Rise up, ye woman. Now he's saying a lot of these liberals are going to be the women. Women are very easy when it comes to going with the modern times. That's why it's so, that's why our women are so many modern women today. It's not a lot of traditional women. The traditional women are only the ones that repent. That goes back to traditional ways. Don't believe in that feminist and 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 and, and men are men are equal. Women are equal to men and and all this crap. So they say, rise up, ye women. Go ahead. Rise up, ye women that are at, that are at ease. Hear my voice, ye careless daughters. Sorry, hear my voice, ye careless daughters. Go ahead. Give ear unto my speech. Go ahead. Many days and years shall be troubled. So he's saying the women, you're going to have many days and years that y'all are going to be troubled. Many days and years that our women is going to be troubled. Go ahead. Ye careless woman, for the vintage shall fail. The gathering shall not come. Go ahead. Tremble. Ye woman that are at ease, be troubled, ye careless ones, strip you, and make you bare, and gird sackcloth upon your loins. So now it's said, so now it's prophesied of the women of Jerusalem, they're being warned. The Israelite women are being warned. And it's saying, ye careless women, and it's talk also talking to the women that are liberals. The women who are modern women. He's talking to them. The ones that say, rise up. The ones you're going to be in trouble for many days, many years. So now let's look at what they're talking about. Uh, go to, from the Urban Dictionary, what the, how they define a modern woman. Modern woman can very often be put in the text and has many uses. Both professional and sexual. So I say, when it comes to the modern woman, they define it in the subjects of sexual and professional. A job and sex. Go ahead. The modern woman has a job, not entry level, has done very well for herself, and maintains or does not or does not maintain a family. In the 1950s. When the term first came to use, it was also a sexual thing. A modern woman can have as many romantic interests as she sees fit. So now it's going into the sexuality. Because remember, even back in those generations, it was taboo for women to be sleeping around. Go ahead. The modern woman pursues affairs and is equal to the modern is equal to the man when it comes to sexual partners, making the end of the nice girl era in which women were only supposed to have one sexual partner as, as opposed to men who could pursue interests of a sexual nature. So let's say it was the end of the nice girl era. Now it's the, uh, what do you say, the, the, the Mary Jane era. Have a professional career and a, a, and a man on on side, multiple men on side. This is it's a it, modern woman got rid of the nice girl era. Was that on that? Yeah. Right, so that's the definition from the Herbal Dictionary. So I want to look at so with the with the modern woman, it goes into the professions, the professionals. And, 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 and sexuality. The modern woman having better jobs today and they're 
not um, like shamefaced about their sexuality, multiple parties or whatnot. So the first I want to deal with the professional, the professional side. Let's look at the jobs of the Bible. The jobs of the Bible. Go to Sirach 38. So with the job with the jobs of the Bible, there wasn't there was a lot of jobs for uh for women, but it wasn't a lot of paying jobs for women. Because back then all the jobs that were for women, households had their wives and their daughters for that. So they rarely had to pay a woman to do that. Unless they, because usually if they had men servants, when we was in power, they didn't have to pay because it was the other nations. But even when we wasn't in power, we still had our wives and our daughters for that. That's why we get, that's why, when, that's why, uh, when a man is marrying off his daughter, he had to, it was a dowry. Because he's losing an asset from his house. And she's going to be another man's asset. That's why it was a, that's why it was, it's a dowry for, for virgins and women. He had to pay the father for that. He's losing an asset from his house. Because without her, he probably have to pay a woman or pay uh, get a man servant or a maid to do the job that his daughter was doing. To do the job that that his daughter. That's why it was a diary for her. But let's look at the jobs of the Bible. Go to Sirach 38, start at 24. Sirach chapter 38, and verse 24. The wisdom of a learned man cometh by opportunity of leisure. And he that has little business shall become wise. So I'm sorry, a man that has little business, that's how he, he be wise. Go ahead. How can he get wisdom that holdeth the plow? That holdeth the plow, go ahead. And so, he, so these are the occupations. He said, hold the plow, go ahead. And glory in the in the gold. Go ahead. That yeah. driving oxen. Just working on, on, on the on the field, on the farm. And with animals. Go ahead. Drive the oxen. Go ahead. And is occupied in their labors. And whose talk is a bullock. Go ahead. He giveth his mind to make furrows, and is diligent to give the kind of kind father. Go ahead. So every carpenter. So they, you know, it's, it's, it was it was farmers, it was carpenters. Go ahead. And workmaster that labored night and day, and they that cut and grave seals. The and, grave seals I mean, it was uh, the grave diggers. Go ahead. And are diligent to make great variety. And give themselves to counterfeit imagery, and watch to finish a work. Go ahead. The smith also sitting by the anvil, and considering the iron work. So then we have smiths, the one that's that's working with metal, making swords, making fences, making all this stuff. So to say now, so these are all jobs that the women didn't do. That's like if you want to compare it today. This is like construction workers, uh, 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 linemen, um, uh, the ones that, you know, these hard jobs that women don't tend to go into. They say one of the top jobs that our women do now is, uh, like I said, retail and government jobs. Those were, the, those are the pretty much the jobs that the women going to now but these type of jobs these were all the jobs that were going on back in the in the bible times carpentry the ones that's keeping the city going go ahead the vapor of the fire wasted his flesh and he fought he he fight it with the heat of the furnace the noise of the hammer and the anvil is ever in his ears and his eyes Look still upon the pattern of the thing that he maketh. He setteth his mind to finish his work, and wash it, and watch it to polish it perfectly. So these these, these are the jobs of Job thirty two, verse thirty two. Without these, 
cannot a city be inhabited? They say without these, a city cannot be inhabited, cannot be lived in. Go ahead. Without these, cannot a city be inhabited? And they shall not dwell where they will, nor go up and down. So these, so these type of jobs is the jobs that keep the city going. These were the, these were the hard jobs that that they were getting paid a lot of money to do carpentry. They were keeping the city going, keeping the city built. That would be today the construction workers, the the the, the, the people that built the. Uh, the water system, all these hard jobs, these are jobs that even women of today don't get into. Let's look at the type of job women had in, in what they call biblical times. Go to Pro, uh, First Samuel, now go to Proverbs 31, let's just get straight to it. The Proverbs 31, read verse 10. Proverbs chapter 31 and verse 10. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rupees. Chapter 13. Verse 13. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. Go ahead. She is like the merchants, ships. She bringeth her food from afar. Jump to verse 24. So now it's going into. It's like wool and that is uh, making clothes. They were make clothes and they got paid for it. Jump to 24. Verse 24. She maketh fine linen and selleth it. So she can say she made fine linen and sell it. Go ahead. And delivered girdles unto the merchant. And she even uh, she even delivered girdles. So she so she is this is how the type of job that our women had. But is, but her main job was to do this. Uh, they couldn't do these hard jobs, but these were the jobs that they were getting paid for. Uh, merchants, basically more of making clothes. Those are those were their skills, stuff with their hands. Usually if they had a farm, they would only work on the farm of their own farm. Working with her hands and getting the food, planting the, the vegetables and all of that, picking the vegetables. She did that on her own house. But as far as making money, she would sell clothes. She would make clothes and sell them. That's how they made money. But all the other jobs, they were up to the men. All these hard, the hard, vigorous jobs where they had to toil, that was up to the men where they got good wages for those. So that, that's why the man's job was to protect and provide. And the woman's job was this. Go to 1 Timothy chapter 5. 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse 14. 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse 14. I will therefore that the younger women marry, bear children, guide the house, give an occasion to the adversary, to speak reproachfully. So that was that was the role of 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 the women. That was the role of them is to guide the house, and that that's an important job of our sisters. That's that's the most important. Matter of fact, let me even phrase that. That's the most important job of our nation. Is to guide the house. That's important. Go to First Corinthians eleven because the thing, the thing with the modern woman is the the modern woman is set upon. I don't need a man. That's the whole. That's the new way of thinking for our women. I don't need a man. And we need each other. So the mind frame, to get out that mind frame in the, uh, to be a traditional woman is, we have to look at it as we need each other. There should be no man walking around saying, I don't need our Israelite woman. There should be no Israelite woman saying, 
I don't need our Israelite men. The Israelite woman was made for the Israelite man. The so-called white woman was made for the so-called white man and so forth and so on. There's no such thing as them not needing each other when God made them specifically for each other. Let's get that in uh, 1 Corinthians 11. And 8. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 8. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. For this cause of the woman... It said, it said the woman was created for the man. So what, how do you say, if you was created for the man, how would you say, I don't need a man? And, and that makes no sense. That is a modern terminology. So what else is a modern terminology is the modern woman became or are independent. Let's look at that. Look up independent in America. Okay, Remember, the feminist movement was about freedom. The, the women today are more free than they have ever been in history. So it said, not subject to control by others. Go ahead. Not afflicted. Or read, read that one say, self government. You always got that. Read that again. Self governing. It said, so it's self governing. Meaning you have no head. Having having control or rule over oneself. Let's get a preset. Go to Sarat. Go to Sarat. Sirach, uh, 36 and 25. Sirach chapter 36 and verse 25. Where no hedge is, there the possession is spoiled. It say where no hedge, meaning the hedge is uh, the protection. It say where no hedge is, meaning no head, the possession is spoiled. The possession is the wife. The woman is spoiled. Go ahead. Where no hedge is, there the possession is spoiled. And he has no wife will wander up and down mourning. So that proves that, prove that the man needs the woman, the woman needs the man. To say, like a man that has no wife will wander up and down with mourning. A woman that has no husband will be spoiled. Will be of no good substance. That's what spoiled is, no good substance. Go back to that definition. It said, uh, not subject to control by others, self-governing. Read the uh, second. Not affiliated with a larger controlling unit. It say, not affiliated with a larger controlling unit. This person is uh, uh, independent. This person is just out and about. Total freedom. Go ahead. Not requiring or relying on something else, 
not contention, not looking to others for one's opinion or for guidance and conduct. They say not looking to others for one's opinions or guidance. This is what independent is. And this goes with the modern woman. She is somebody that goes to nobody for guidance. That's totally against the scripture. What I'm, what I'm showing guy is basically the traditional woman is righteous. The modern woman is wicked. Somebody that has no, that don't look for counsel. A woman that just out here operating on her own. Read the next one. Not bound by or committed to a political party. Not, Go ahead. Yeah, read the next one. not requiring or relying on others as for care or livelihood. Being enough to, be fr to free one from the necessity of working for a living. Showing a desire for freedom. Let's say what? Showing a desire for freedom. Showing a desire for freedom. This is the modern woman. The modern woman also goes with the independent woman. This song, all this stuff. It's a whole movement for women being independent. It's a whole movement. Go to Second Peter two for these women. They say they're self gov they're self governing. Second Peter two and nine. Second Peter chapter two verse nine. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations, and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness. And what else? And despise government. And the what? And despise government. So these are people that despise government. They want to be independent. Go ahead. Presumptuous are they. Self will. They are what? Presumptuous are they. Self will. They are self will. This is go. This and this is somebody. This goes for men and women. That independent stuff. Nobody can tell them what to do. Nobody can counsel them. Nobody can tell them or, uh, if they're wrong or not. Who are you to tell me this? I'm independent. Go ahead. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignity. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. Meaning, meaning uh, authority. People who are in authority, they not even, they not afraid to speak evil. Let's get a priest. So go to Jude chapter one, three verse eight. Yeah, Jude one and eight. Jude chapter one verse eight. Likewise, also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion. And speak evil of dignity. They say they despise dominion. Despise dominion. They don't want nobody to rule over them. And speak evil of government. Speak e speak evil of order. Because government is just order. They speak evil of that. I should be able to make my own decisions. I should be able to do what I want to do. I should be able to work when I where I want to work. But when you have that good job, what happens when you get a husband? Go to Sirach 25. Sirach 25, verse 22. Sirach chapter 25, verse 22. A woman, if she maintain her husband, and she do what? A woman, if she maintain her husband. So now you have a woman. If she's making all the money, and now the roles are switched. The roles are switched. Go ahead. A woman, if she maintain her husband, is full of anger. She's what? 
is full of anger. She's full of anger. Go ahead. Impudence. 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 Let's look up that word impudence. Y'all, we got we, we on the mirror on today. <laughs> look up uh, impudence. Put a D N T. Impudent. Marked by contemptuous or cocky boldness. Let's say <laughs> she's going to be cocky. She's going to be bold. Go ahead. Or disregard for others. It says a disregard of others. <coughs> this, is, this is a woman that's playing the role and making all the money. In the house, go ahead. Read two. Obsolete, lacking modesty. It says like she's going to lack modesty. This type of woman, she lacks modesty. So, so this is so this is going so this is going into if if the woman if the if it's hard to be for a woman to be in that role if she's maintaining. The husband. It's hard for her to be in that role. That's scripture right there. And that's proof. So we know the role that the woman is supposed to be in. She's supposed to be submissive and the help me. But if she's maintaining the husband, she's going to be bold, cocky, and immodest. Immodest. It's, it, she can't help it because she's outside her jurisdiction. She's outside her traditional way. The traditional way is the ways of God. When you outside of that, you can't help but be these things. Meaning on the devil's side. Now, a one so the modern woman are by themselves. Why? Because she takes pride. And believing she does not need anyone. Modern woman takes pride in not needing anyone. They take pride in that. I don't need, especially men. They take pride in that. That's like a uh, a goal that they that they reach. But go to Zephaniah two. Zephaniah two. And read verse 1. Zephaniah chapter 2 and verse 1. Gather yourselves together. Yea, gather together, O nation not desire. This how you do what? Gather yourselves together. Yea, gather together, O nation not desire. So, a, mo a, 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 a modern woman, she can't take pride, or let me say this, a modern Israelite woman, she's not supposed to take pride of not needing anyone, because we are supposed to be doing what? Gathering together. How can you take pride in not needing any, anyone, if we are supposed to be gathering together? If you, uh, uh, the modern woman takes pride in that. So much pride, she's, what they call it, the effing dress. She's putting on her effing dress, going to the club. I don't need nobody, independent women, all this stuff. But we're supposed to be gathering together. Go ahead. Verse 2. Before the decree bring forth, before the day pass as the chaff, before the fierce anger of the Lord come upon you, before the day of the Lord's anger come upon you. So it say, gather together before judgment. So you can't take pride in not needing anyone. Because we're supposed to be coming together before judgment. Go ahead. Verse 3. Seek ye the Lord, all ye meek of the earth, which have wrought his judgment. Seek righteousness. It say, do what? Seek righteousness. Seek meekness. It say, seek meekness, humility. The modern woman is full of pride. 
She don't need nobody. She's independent. It's full of pride. I don't need no man. Every woman needs a man. You were made for the man. Every man needs a woman. How do a man need a woman, but a woman don't need a man? It don't work like that. We need we need each other. We were made for each other. It say a man go up and down. A man that have no wife go up and down morning. And a woman with no head is a possession spoil. You can't take pride in not needing anyone. You want to get it? Yeah. Get it up, Genesis 2 and 18. Book of Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. And the, and the Lord God said, It is not good. That the man should be alone. Okay, God looked at uh, Adam and he placed him in the garden of Eden. He said, it was not good that man should be alone. Go ahead. I will make him a help meet he said, for him. He said he needs someone, a companion, a help meet. So the man, so that's right there. That's confirmation right there. You know, man is not met. Men do need women. And women need men. Now, the man, the woman is to help me to the man. As the one, as the man is a stronger vessel for the woman. That's all I want to do. So. Yeah, and, and that's it just goes into that's that's the the the, the modern woman take pride of I don't need a man. When that's not the way that we should be thinking. Go to uh Ecclesiastes four. Ecclesiastes four start at nine. Ecclesiastes chapter four. In verse nine, two are better than one. What? What is? What is saying? Two are better than one. Let's say two are better than one. Go ahead. Because they have a good reward for their labor. Go ahead. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But the but woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he had not another to help him up. It's a the woe means destruction. Destruction to somebody that's independent. Destruction to, is going to come to somebody that's independent because they have somebody, they don't have anybody to catch them when they fall. Go ahead. That, that goes for men or women. Go ahead. Yeah, that's a good precept to that, to that Genesis right there. That's actually yeah. a good precept to it. As to, as to why the man should not do it alone. Ecclesiastes 4 and 10. For if they fall, the one will lift up the, the fellow. I'm sorry, verse 11. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? How can there's you can't be warm alone? You can't you can't be warm alone. Because it's not meant for us to be alone. It's not meant for us to be independent. So the modern woman, what? Modern women are horrible in teams. They have no, they don't have good teamwork. They don't, they're not good in relationships. And I'm not talking about a spouse relationship. I'm going to talk about relationships, period. They're not good in team situations. So the modern woman, when they're not good in team situations, that goes against the Bible. Go to 1 Corinthians 12. We're just still defining. We're just thoroughly defining the modern woman. We didn't spend that much time on the traditional one. We just thoroughly define and modern one. Oh, 1 Corinthians 12 and 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 12. For as the body is one, it has many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body. So are, are one body, God. So also is Christ. 
For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. So the body is, is not independent. It's many. It's many. So modern women, with them having that independent, that self-governing uh, mentality, self-will, despised government, they're not good in congregations or teams. They're literally operating in this world by themselves. That's that goes against the traditional woman and the modern woman. The traditional woman admits to needing their men. A traditional woman admits to having they that they need a head over them. There's no fighting that. But a traditional woman has plenty of backup. When the traditional woman falls, there's many there to catch her. When a modern woman fall, there's there's nobody there. Cause she's she didn't push everybody away. She didn't push everybody away. That's the difference. Go to, uh, jump to verse 27. Verse 27. Now ye are the body of Christ, and members in particular. And God has set some in the church. First apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers. After that, miracles. Then gifts of healing. Help. You say what? Then gifts of healing. Helps, governments, diversities of tongues. So it says, so in this congregation, there's going to be helps, governments. The modern woman, the independent woman, what does it say they do? They despise government. So if they despise government, guess what? All these women that say they in the truth, but not in the congregation, that's an end of their, that's an independent situation. That's a modern woman tr tr situation there. So the first step of becoming a traditional woman and getting out of a modern woman situation is you have to join the Church of Christ. That's, that's, that's the first step. You have to join the no more in the, being independent. No more having that modern woman mentality. I can do everything by myself. You can't have traditional woman outcomes with a modern woman mentality. It will never work. And uh, those modern women that modern one mentality of independent spirits, they're the ones that fall for the doctrine of devils. Mm. They toss with every every wind of doctrine. They believe everything they hear because they don't have they don't have the order in their life. So they believe whatever comes whatever they hear. So and so now let's look at so we're talking about modern women are horrible in teens. What is the top element? Now, I, I want to start getting into the reason for that. And then we're going to get into how a modern, the title is, How to Be a Traditional Woman in a Modern Situation. We ain't got to that yet, but I just want to show, show y'all why modern women are bad in teams. Why modern women are bad in congregations. Because the top element of a team, the top element First of all, let's let's think about this. Every successful person has a team. The president has a team. All these actors and, and famous people, all of them have teams. 
Uh, the kings in the Bible had a team. Redbone, Jeroboam, they had teams. Counselor, the kings had a team. The king consisted of a priest, a prophet, a, a, a counselor. Everybody successful has a team. There is nobody that was independent. Christ had a team. He had many disciples. Christ it wasn't by himself. He had a team. Everybody who's successful have a team. You're not going to get anywhere in this world being independent. Nowhere. Having backup. Having a counselor. You're not going to get anywhere without having a team of people. This is why modern women don't get the outcomes that they want. They don't have a team. And not only do they not have a team, they work horrible with teams. Because they have the independent spirit. So let's look at that. So the, the top element of a team which is the top element of a church is trust. The reason why an independent or a modern woman do horrible with teens is because she don't trust anybody. They told me my time. They told me my time. That's the reason why they do horrible in teams is there is no trust. The top element, if you read any article, the top why te uh, high performing teams, what, why do these teams perform so highly? It's because of trust. People are, uh, people within these teams are, these are the, now these are the elements of trust. The people in these teams are reliable. Everybody on this team, you can depend on them. They'll be there for you. You call them, and if they need something, they're there. That's how you build trust, being reliable. What's another uh, attribute, an element of building trust? Honest. Being honest. If, 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 if you're these modern women deal with people that have none of these attributes attributes that it messes them up it's a it's a it's a it's a bad thing to have a mentality of you don't need anybody that's a terrible thing because it's untrue it's untrue who don't need nobody that goes against the Bible So it's honest, being honest. We talk about stuff that builds trust. Uh, being open, being vulnerable. What else? Uh, communication. Everybody's been on uh, on one accord. Knowing everybody knows what's going on. Communication is an element of trust. Uh, accountability. Having the ability to admit when you're wrong. Not having excuses. That builds trust. And good will, meaning good intent. Everybody that has good intent. Everybody is is not out for themselves. Everybody is doing doing things for the next. That's what builds trust. All those elements is what builds trust. And to get in the traditional mind frame, you have to put these type of people in your life. You have to put this team together. Get out that modern woman attitude. Let's see if the Bible says this. Go to go back to Romans 12. Go back to Romans 12, read verse 10. Romans chapter 12 and verse 10. Be kindly affectionate one to another. Be what? Be kindly affectionate. One to another, Go ahead. with brotherly love, 
in honor, preferring one another. So let's say, be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love. This is going into all those elements of trust. And, I, and, I, and I'm not talking about, let's make a, a separation here. I'm not talking about where the scriptures where I say trust no man. When it say trust no man, that's talking about going into doctrine. Somebody that give you a doctrine without the word of God. That's what that is talking about. We're talking about when you're in the team, when you're in the church. These are the attributes of trust. Uh, verse 11. Not slothful in business. Fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulations, continuing instant in prayer, distributing to the necessity of saints. You say what? Distributing to the necessity of saints. Go ahead. Given to hospitality. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Go ahead. Rejoice with them. Rejoice with them that do rejoice, and weep with them that weep. Go ahead. Be not, I mean, sorry, be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceit. This this goes into, if you got a team of people that's doing this, that's building trust. Let's get some more. Go to uh, Romans 13. One scripture over, Romans 13, read verse 8. Romans 13 and 8. Owe no man anything. But to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. It said, owe no man anything but to love another. So this is this is going into how if a congregation operates like this, you will that is that will be building trust. That should be starting to turn a person outside of that modern woman attitude. That independent attitude. If you have people in your life that you can trust, you, you should be making a turn in your walk. You should be making a turn in your reformation. Uh, go to Hebrews 3 and 13. Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 13. But exhort one another daily. This ain't do what? But exhort one another daily. Why what? While it is called today. This ain't exhort one another daily while it's called today. Go ahead. Lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. This saying you will be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. So we got to uh, read 12. Read 12. Verse 12. Take heed, brethren. Lest there be any of you an evil heart of unbelief. So it said, take heed. If any of the people in this team, if anybody in this church have an evil heart of unbelief. If 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 you if you sense somebody that has an evil heart of unbelief, go ahead. The take heed, brother. Lest there be any of you an evil it be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Go ahead and do what? But exhort one another daily. Say like exhort daily, go ahead. While it is called today. Or lest what? Lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. So this so this is going into this is building trust. If you got people to do these things, why, why, why are you at your lowest? You build in trust. Go to Hebrews ten and twenty-five. Ten and twenty-five. Ten and twenty-five. Yeah. Hebrews ten, verse twenty-five. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as ye see the day approach. So I say, we can't. You can't forsake the assembly. But we exhort one another. We exhort one another. That's forsaking the assembly is going into that independent mind frame. Independent mind frame. 
So now let's go into how to be a traditional woman in the modern situation. So the modern situation is a situation that we didn't have for the last, what, since the 1970s? It's the one parent household, the 60s. The mother is, the mother is there to fend for herself and her children in the household. That is the 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 ninety percent of our since what was they there in the sixties? It started in probably it started about the sixties. Yeah. And it's, it's it's been like that ever since. So how do you become a traditional woman in that modern situation? Well first we have to do those all those things that we talked about. You have to have backup, you have to have a team, you have to have a congregation. Now once you have have that congregation, what's the first thing you gotta do for the women? Or so what's the struggle? Let's get Ecclesiastes seven. Ecclesiastes seven and twenty five. Ecclesiastes chapter seven. Verse 25. I applied my heart to know and to search and to seek out wisdom and the reason of things and to know the wickedness of folly, even of foolishness and madness. And I find more bitter than death the woman. So, we know this scripture. So it's saying the only thing That's worse than death is a bitter woman. Is a bitter woman. It's like a bitter woman is 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 is, is worse than death. Go ahead. Whose heart is snares and nets, and her hands are as bands. Whoso pleases God. It's like what? Now this this is the key here. It's like whoso please God, y'all do what? Shall escape from her. Shall escape from a bitter woman. To say a godly man will escape a bitter woman. Go ahead. But the sinner shall be taken by her. Let's say, but a sinner gonna be taken by her. Gonna be overpowered by a bitter woman. So we now we see that there is no nothing worse. Than a bitter one. Let's say she's worse than death. That's bad. That's bad. Go to Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4 and 31. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31. Let all bitterness. Let, the, let what? Let all bitterness. So, our women. This is. How you go into being a traditional woman in a modern situation? Do what? Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. So now you have to let a uh, uh, woman. You have to do the work to let this bitterness go. You have to do the work to let this bit bitterness. Go and when you in the in in the congregation. What when you got to get rid of that bitterness, that little bit of modern woman that you still have in you. You have to rely on the men of the congregation. Meaning what? It's hard for a woman to let that go because the woman in these modern situations, they are doing the role of the man and the woman. When you're doing the role of, a, of the man and the woman in your household, that means you need relief. To get relief, you have to depend on the of the men 
of your congregation. We are here to do everything. There shouldn't be there, there shouldn't be a woman outside cutting grass. When I see a woman outside cutting grass, I automatically think she must don't know not no man. Or she's a got that independent don't need a man attitude. That's the only two it has to be. Because men is is, is we not supposed to be letting a woman do those kind of things, especially the woman that's in a modern situation that needs the men of the church. That needs we we are here to fill that role, just how the women of the congregation are there to help the men. The only need, the only need. That the woman of a congregation and a man of a congregation will be comfort, not comfort, uh, sex. When you part of the congregation, that's the only thing you will be lacking in your life if you are a single man or a single woman. All the other roles are supposed to be fulfilled. But are you a woman that's calling the men to fulfill that? Have y'all got any calls? In the last, let's just say, month of helping our women. What about not the women of the congregation, but just women in your life. That means our women is not using the men. They're in an independent state. You have our women have to have to get out that mentality of. Uh, I can figure it out because you're putting more on your plate when when it's unnecessary. And I, I'm not even just talking about the congregation. I'm talking about just women in my life that's not part of the congregation that know that stuff can get completed. You don't have to you know, relax, uh, stress about this, stress about that. Because there's not a man in your life, or not a man, in, not a man in your life, but a man in the house. That's too much stress. And when you're under all that, when you're under all of that, it causes heaviness. Let's get that in Sirach 38. Thirty-eight and eighteen. Sirach so thirty-eight, verse eighteen. For of heaviness cometh death. For what? For of heaviness cometh death. Go ahead. And the heaviness of the heart breaketh strength. And the heaviness of the heart breaks your strength. Your strength is your faith. We should be, we should be getting those calls. We should be getting those those those. Uh, requests from our women that's in these modern situations. Same thing for us. Now this don't go for for uh, Jerry or Zamak, but I guess for me and Mike, we single men. When was the last time we called a woman for something? We're not we're not using our team. We're not using our congregation. We are too on this independent term. 
or we're just suffering through it. We're not using each other. When we need each other the most. That's the thing. We need each other the most and we're not using each other. That's, that's the whole thing. And then that's causing stress. That's causing stress. So to be in a traditional mind frame for our women is y'all have to rely more on your team. You have to lean more on your team. Because doing that, that's how men, that's how the men of our congregation learn how to be husbands. That's how women of our congregation learn to be wives. Because you can't become righteous unless you be righteous. You can't become a wife unless you be a wife. That's the whole thing. You won't become a wife unless you be a wife. You won't become a husband unless you be a husband. You can't, that's not on the job training. You can't just say, I'm going I'm to learn how to be a wife when I get a husband. That's not how it works. That's why it's too many divorces. Within the truth and, without, and outside the truth. Because it's too much on the job training. It's too much on the job training. You don't think you're a wife until you get married. No, you're a wife way before you get married. You're a husband way before you get married. But how do you do that without using your team? Let's get one. Let's get one more. Um, let's get to Rock 36. Okay, that's going into trust. 36 and 26. So Rock chapter 36 and verse 26. Who will trust a thief? Well appointed. So who go, who gonna trust a thief that's in high places? Nobody gonna trust a thief that's 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 at the top. The president is a thief. Let's say read it again. Who will trust a thief? Well appointed. Okay. That skip it from city to city. So who so who will believe a man that has no house? They say who gonna believe a man that have no house? Go ahead. And lodge it wheresoever the night take him. And lodge wherever the night take him. A wrong stone. Right. <laughs> so this goes into into the trust. These, these are the type of men that our, our women are choosing. People that they can't trust. And you choosing these people that you can't trust. Is causing more you to go into this deeper into this independent modern woman mentality. So you have to get a team. Within this team, is trust is being built. Once trust is being built, you have to learn how to lean on this team. It's men. It's 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 men in this congregation that can handle. All the things of a husband. Except the sex part. So same vice versa. Same thing, vice versa for the woman and the men. But you have to have that team. And that's the only way you can get out of you can be in that traditional mentality. 
So you can be a traditional woman in a modern situation, but you have to lean on your team.